the darkness. Welcome to the stream. My name is Timaz. This is the Construction Zone. Uh, how's your day going? How are you? How are things? <laughs> uh, it is a Wednesday afternoon here in the uh, beautiful Midwest of the United States uh, in St. Louis, Missouri, right along the Mississippi River. Um, and we are going to be jumping back into some sable uh, this is currently part 13 of our first playthrough. Uh, we got an absolute truckload of stuff done on Monday. Uh, we went about double overtime. <laughs> we, uh, the stream was about six hours long, um, but we, we completed a lot of stuff and we got a lot of, uh, there, there was a lot of interesting insight and some uh, interesting, interesting, almost like side quest story building that was going on. Um, that wasn't necessarily about like the whole um, the whole process of you know the ships and how things got there and whatnot. Uh, it was more about the uh, the character Lahore and like kind of her backstory and what happened and what was going on with her. And she was kind of having like a, I wouldn't say necessarily a crisis, but she was having a definite, uh, what does it all mean? And where do I fit into the big picture kind of moment? And it was, uh, it was, it was very fascinating how they did it and how they involved us as Sable, as the character Sable. Uh, into this person's decision-making process. So I thought it was pretty cool. I really enjoyed it. Um, but with that being said, um, let's go ahead and actually hop over to the uh, 
to the workshop. Okay. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if the transition made a sound. Uh, we might be having some weird audio issues. Um, man, this happened last time. Um, let me double check my audio. Let's see, hold on one second. Um, yeah, I'm just double checking a few things. Um, hold on, we may need to do a quick reset here. Um, Cause I'm having some weird audio issues. I'll tell you what. Hold on one second. We are going to jump out and we are going to jump right back in. Um, yeah, because I'm going to have to, I think I'm going to have to restart OBS because I think it is having issues. Okay, let's see. We are going to test a couple things here. Testing, testing. Um, that seems to be working. Uh, chat disappeared from the... Uh, from the tablet there, you guys can't see it. And uh, so that that does seem to be a little odd, but outside of that, let me check my audio really quick. Okay, that's working. Um, okay, music is working. Um, we are going to try a transition really quick as we move over to the game and hopefully that transition works and that means we'll uh, we'll be back in business here. So let's go ahead and jump over to the gameplay and see what happens. Yay! <laughs> I think everything's working now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, it, it's again, OBS is super fickle when it comes to audio. And certain settings in there, it just gets, it gets really hinky. So um, I'm going to have to stitch these two pieces of the uh, the intro and this together <laughs> and just try to make it look kind of seamless um, for the for the video later. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and jump into the game. Let me grab my controller here. And we are going to um, we're going to pause the fantastic music provided by Pretzel. Um, if you are unfamiliar with Pretzel, um, you should stop by Pretzel.rocks. Uh, they have a free app, a free player that will allow you to listen to DMCA free music. Um, and in varying levels of DMCA free, um, I have mine set uh, to the highest level of DMCA free, and so my audio that uh, the songs and stuff that I play here on the on the stream, um, I can use this in VODs. Um, I can use it on YouTube. I can use it. You know, I can I can put this recording wherever, and um, I won't get copy strikes because the music is. Uh, the, the copyright and everything is run through Pretzel, and Pretzel allows for this type of use. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I'm a huge fan, and a, uh, a, I'm a customer of Pretzel, but I'm also an affiliate. So if you would like to check them out uh, on my profile uh, here on Twitch, if you scroll down, there's a Pretzel logo down there. If you click on that, it'll take you straight to the website. You can download the software for free, see what you think of it, yada, yada. If you do decide that you want the premium version, which gives you a better quality output, and I believe it gives you, there, there are several different um, levels of, of higher, you know, um, like there's a premium level and then I think there's an ultimate level. Um, but if you do decide to sign up for those um, as an affiliate, I do 
um, you know, I do receive compensation for that. So I just want to be clear about that. Um, but yeah, that is a uh, pretzel is a great company. They're a great bunch of people. They have great support on discord. Uh, I do as someone who uses them, I do, uh, I do vouch for them <laughs> and their product. I think they're a great group of folks. Um, hold on one second. I am realizing. Okay, I need to do an audio check really quick again. Okay, I need to Okay, I just needed to check and make sure that other audio, you know, other than my voice was coming through because, uh, again, the whole thing with o OBS is once it reset, I wasn't sure. It looked like my desktop audio wasn't coming through. Um, but now I am seeing activity. It does sound like Sable's audio is coming through. Uh, so, uh, once again, we're going to try to jump into the game. <laughs> Oh boy, tonight's been kind of a comedy of errors. Uh, we. All right, there we go. See, the hard part is what I hear in my headphones. Um, I hear more than what comes out the other side to uh, that is that is projected basically to the stream, and so what I can hear in my headphones is more than what you guys can hear, um, which is you know on purpose because there are you know like alerts and things like that that are on my computer system that is in my headphones and my feedback that I can hear, um, which you guys don't need to hear. <laughs> and so um, what I'm hearing isn't necessarily what you're hearing. And so I always have to double check and check my feedback monitor and see if I'm broadcasting what I what I should be broadcasting. So, um, OK, um, we are here at uh, Marrowbone Station. And it would appear that we, uh, for some reason, uh, our character is wearing, yet again, one of our other costumes um, that we didn't put them in. So that's interesting. Uh, so let's go ahead and get them changed into what they're supposed to be wearing. Which is the Abexi Glider uniform. There we go. And we are leaving on currently the um, the chum mask because it alerts us whenever there are eggs nearby. Speaking of eggs nearby, hold on. Oh, we that's right. At, at the end of the last stream, we took those. We had another 20 eggs that we took back to the queen. And that person running over there, this, yeah, they, they had a symbol above their head that they could talk. Whoa, wait, come back. Wait, come back. Little person. There we go. You can't catch me. I'm fast as a hover bike. <laughs> Her name is Sophia. We, 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 we just did catch you. <laughs> that was really funny. Um, okay, we're going to move away from the center of town here because, again, for some reason, Marrowbone Station is... The, the volume is really high here. So we are going to uh, step outside the city limits here. So the music calms down.
There we go. Just needed to get out of town so we could hear ourselves think. Um, okay. So. Let's, yeah, we'll back up to this so we won't fall down. There we go. Okay, so, uh, our quests. Whoops. We only have three active quests left. We have done 30 quests. There's only a few left. Um, we have, let's see, uh, the heartbreak in the city. Sorry, there's four left. The heartbreak in the city, we still have to go back to Korea. And we have to, I don't even know who we're supposed to ask for more information about the power cut. I think we've run out of people to talk to. Um, the ancient race. Uh, I'm still confused about this one. Because the ancient, the, the ring shaped artifact. Which is this. We have six of them now. And the... Uh, I'm still not 100% sure what they go to. Um, so. Uh, and then Eye to the Sky. This is the building, the one last building we haven't gone into. Um, and that's we, where we're headed next. We're going to go check that out. Uh, and then the gliding, of course, which is basically the, the very last thing we do. So. Let's go ahead and select this. Let's double check that there's not anything we need to do as far as turning things in. Um, so we have all of the masks that we have coming to us. The only ones we're missing now um, we're missing the guard's mask and the merchant's mask. And I have a feeling we're going to get a badge for figuring out who the thief was. And that's how we're going to get a merchant's mask. But the guard's badge, I would say we're going to have to run into Elizabeth one more time. Because she's the only guard we know that, you know, could give us a badge. So, um, so let's look on our map really quick here. Okay, we are there at Bone Marrow Station. And we want to travel here. So we are facing west. We want to face southeast. So if we're looking west, that's south. Well, it's kind of hard to miss that building. It's gigantic. And it has a giant statue in front of it as well. Uh, it's interesting. I had a thought last, uh, on Monday when I was shutting the game down. Um, I was looking at some of the achievements that are available, uh, through Xbox when you play this game. Because you have in-game achievements, but then you also have kind of the overarching achievements that Xbox gives out. And one of the, one of the, uh, achievements that they have... Uh, is if you uh, have five seconds of air time on your on your bike, on your hover, on your glider, your hover bike. And that confused me because five seconds isn't a lot of time until you're supposed to stay off the ground. <laughs> Um, and then it's it's an incredible amount of time. Uh, it's far too long to fall from something because you fall faster than that. Um, so there has to be a way for you to maintain altitude while on this bike that very much wants to be about two feet off the ground. Um, and so I am a little perplexed. Um... But the thought came to me, we're just going to circle around here real quick to take a look at it. Um, the thought occurred to me that 
In the last stream, we did the quest where we uh, had to use the thermal vents to get up on top of that really super high um, spire where the bird was located. Uh, I don't know if there is one of those at ground level that I could I could get the bike on top of. Because if it would shoot me up in the air enough for me to get five seconds of airtime, that would count. It doesn't say how you have to get the airtime, it just says you have to get the airtime. Okay, I'm not seeing anything extraneous out that way. And in front of us is the edge of the map. So, so yeah, so I am, I am pondering a way to get those five seconds of airtime in. Because clearly there's a way to do it, because there are, I forgot what it said, something like two or three percent of players have done it. So there's a way to do it. Um, I just want to figure out what it is without having to look it up or, you know, use any cheats or anything like that. Alright, so anything on the back side here? Okay, so this is actually multiple buildings. Hold on. There seems to be a crevice. A crevasse. Okay, it's not necessarily, it's just a, okay. I thought maybe that there was going to be like an, a, an inlet there or something where you could go in. Uh, let's see. All right, let's uh, let's cruise around this last little bit here, and we will that looks like it's more more remains. There's not a lot out here. Yeah, there's just not a lot out here. There's birds circling the building. Looks like there might be a... Oh no, it was a redraw issue. I thought maybe there was a... Uh, there might have been a butterfly over there. Okay, that one's got a pretty low entrance point there. I don't know if there is a an area clear of the dunes to get up there or if we need to traverse the dunes to get up there. See, we're just about all the way around, I think. Yeah, all right, let's bank. And we're going to... Um, see if we can kind of angle our way up here. This kind of looks like the entrance. Or an entrance. At one point, it might have been an entrance. Oof. That was a hard bump.
Okay, that tree is just kind of hovering. it on the building. Okay. Antenna stopped moving. So I'm gonna say it's maybe not in... Maybe it's not on the building, but maybe it's in the building. Yeah, I don't see anything up there, so... It's either on or in, one of the two. It's not out here, I don't believe. Don't see anything down there. Don't see anything down there. Looks like may have been at one point may have been again may have been an entrance. Ouch. Okay, we uh, circled close and far, and there does not seem to be a typical uh, front door here. Um, got this little, okay, where our antennas are wiggling again. Is that scrap? Oh, it's the remains of like a a spire, I think. Yeah, there were there were columns here at some point in the past. Okay, there's a hole in the roof, so we do know that there is a way to get in. This appears to be the front door. After all that. <laughs> Our poor bike. Um... Okay. All right, we are at what appears to be the front door. Our bike seems to be unhappy. Let's put our bike somewhere where it will be happy.
There we go. Now it's on flat ground. Okay. Uh, it looks like at one point there was a cart out here. To aid the weary traveler. Which we can't seem to get on top of. Alright, not seeing any clay pots or anything around here. Alright, we'll check over here. No, looks like we're clear. Uh, okay. Interesting design. Okay, our antenna are moving, which tells me that there is an egg somewhere nearby. Uh, nearby, it turns out, is a fairly relative term. Uh, okay, it doesn't appear to be on the outside of that. Let's check around the front here real quick. And there it is. Alright, our first egg of this uh, game tonight. That gives us 125. Um, what I was doing was checking back here really quick to see if there was anything on this kind of flat area here. Because this does look like it's part of the property of whatever this is. And we also haven't gotten close enough for it to actually tell us its name. Which is interesting. Because I feel like we're right up on it, and our antennas are going again. Which means we are getting closer to another... Not back there, not back there. Alright, let's hop up here really quick. Check the roof. Whoa. Almost went for a fall. That's cool. Whatever that is. Okay, I have a feeling the reason the roof is open is because we... Oh, there's another one. I have a feeling the reason the roof is open is because we're going to have to do some back and forth trips here where we're inside and come back out to drop from the ceiling so that we can gather certain items. Uh, okay, we... Uh, we didn't take a good look at the statue here. Um, it's a character holding... It looks like a character just holding their mask under their arm. Okay. Our antenna are no longer wiggling, so I think we've collected what we can for right now. Okay, we've got a broken roof line here, broken roof line there. Uh, from this angle, I can't see what mask they're holding. It looks like a, just like a space helmet. This looks like your average everyday helmet. 
Okay, I'm not seeing anything up on the lip of this either. So that appears to be clear. All right, let's, there we go. We are officially at the watch. All right, let's grab chalk butterfly there. Do we have any goodies back here? No, nope, no clay pots. Uh, I believe there was a butterfly on this side. All right. Okay. Hold on. Let's just look at this logically for a second. Okay, this was the outside of the building we were on. That's the raised part of the roof. That's the lower part. So there isn't anything external to this. Okay. I was just making sure we weren't missing anything. Double checking my surroundings. All right. Here we go. We are in. There's one statue, two statues. Um, right, anything back here, anything on top of these, those appear to go all the way to the roof. So no, all right, we'll do a quick run around. Nope. Nothing back there. All right. Okay, nothing too out of the ordinary. Let's see, what do we have here? One, two, three. Okay. All right. Statues on either side. Broken statue. Broken statue. So, is it time and weather that broke these things? Or has somebody been destructive and came in and broke all this stuff? And that's what I'm curious about. I just noticed there seems to be an awful lot of Okay, let's double check this really quick. Okay, there's a lip up there, but it's tiny. So I don't believe there's anything in there. All right. Another broken statue. That. Okay, we've got the sun, we've got the moon. So this is some sort of a... A time... So that's why it's called the watch. This is some kind of... 
either a timekeeping device or a um, an uh, astronomy to like map the stars or the alignment of planets. Take a look at it from here. Okay, so we've got the sun and the moon. What's on the plate? I don't know if that's pertinent or not. It's very pretty, though. It's cool. Um, okay, so let's go back here. Holy Toledo. And that one's even bigger. Okay, and this has multiple levels in it. There appear to be... Like I was saying, I, I thought this was an observatory. There appear to be gears on the ceiling to make the ceiling open up. Um... Okay, once we go around the lower level, we'll check out the upper levels. Uh, what's down here? <laughs> okay. We have... A whole lot of symbols here. Uh, we have the symbol that kind of looks like this building. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. That looks like the beetles out in the... It looks like an upside-down beetle, the orange beetle. Uh, the ball is the power source building. Uh, that, I'm assuming, is the chum worm. That is the king beetle. And the sun marker. That one I'm not so sure about. That's funny, all the rest of them seem very apparent, but that one's just like, uh, sun. Okay, so... We will traverse up and see... Uh, on this level, not seeing anything, which looks like I'm... There we go. Okay, I believe this is the level we came in on. Anything under here? No. Okay, uh, let's see. We will go up one more level, check things out. Okay, it looks like there was an interim level that collapsed. Okay, my, uh... My antennas are rocking, so there is a worm in here, or an egg. And 
and it stopped. So it's somewhere behind us. Okay, this appears to be the level that collapsed. Okay, it's not showing me any indication that I can move that. are fluttering again. Okay, and there's another controller here. So one, two, three, one, two, three. There's a controller over there. Let's look up. Is there... Aha, there's a ledge all the way around here. Mm, I don't see it. wonder if it's outside on that ledge. Yeah, because it stopped moving. So, yeah, so on the back side of this, on the, oh, unless this goes around. No. Was this where we came in? No. However, someone was here. As your die. Uh, someone is here. This is how you turn it on. Yeah, things just got real colorful all of a sudden. Um, all right, hold that thought. I see the... Oh, that. I need to take care of that. There we go. Alright. Okay, so we need to understand how this works. And I'm, I can only guess that it is going to give us... some sense of direction on this. We're not going to stand on that just yet. A 
flash of light shines off something behind my eye, and a piece of knowledge forms in my mind. The sunstone manifests when the machinery is in place. When the sun casts shadows, provide the stone the answer it seeks. Okay, run that by me again. The sunstone manifests. So the sunstone, I'm assuming, might be that thing out in the middle there, the ball-looking thing. The sunstone manifests, which means comes into being, when the machinery is in place, or when we get everything aligned. When the sun casts shadows, provide the stone the answer it seeks. But what is the question? Okay. Well, we turned it on. The sunstone manifests. Yeah. Sun right there. When the machinery is in place. When the sun casts shadows, provide the stone the answer it seeks. So I'm guessing the answer it's looking for right now, because of what's on there, is the sun? The answer it's looking for is the sun. And the moon is over there. So are we supposed to swing this around so the sun... I don't think there's any way I can get out there. Am I supposed to get out there? Okay, now it changed. Now it's the beetle. that just did okay it moved it moved those three things there so if I hit it again no it moves just the the, the center one Ok, 
Okay, and oh, you can see on the rings. Okay, so that one that one does the yeah, each one I think is lit up differently. So this one does the outside circle. What did that move? The moon? This is really hard to see from this vantage point. I mean, it's like next to impossible to figure out from this vantage point. This is the middle one, which is what? The sun? No, it's another one of the planets. so so confused okay hold on over there there is a shelf with the face on it and one of the things is missing hold on this might be part of the puzzle Sun, beetle, uh, wait, well, there's a piece missing. Sun, beetle, the power source is missing. No, it's right there. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. Four, five, six. one is golden. The sunstone manifests when the machinery is in place. When the sun cast shadows provide the stone the answer it seeks. So it's it's essentially like a a puzzle when it casts shadows the problem is is it keeps changing what's lit up so there are three controls
and each one can be moved. I, the 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 number of potential combinations is like mind-boggling. What constitutes an answer? back here now this seemed rather intentional <sighs> this is very confusing This is very confusing. I don't have enough... I don't have enough data to understand what I'm supposed to do here. Can I see? I can't see any of them. Okay, so that put that put the ball facing the um facing the face over there. Let's try to do that. We'll put all the ball things So this one, where is this one? Okay, I went the wrong way. Or did I? No. Oh, oh. Okay. I'm going to say that that was a right answer. And now that one's blue over there too, isn't it? It is. This one's blue as well. Interesting. So two out of three are now blue. So now I just got to make this one blue. How do I get over there without falling? Uh, go around the other way would have been the right answer. Um, is there a way to get over there without having to... Move 
that planet into alignment. Everything is lined up for the sun, which is the first one in the morning. It'll turn on as the sun, I believe. to the front, please. Oh, hi, Rose. How are you? Welcome in. It is good to see you. I think I'm doing this right. I don't know. I, I, I may be causing the collapse of civilization, the end of the world. Not entirely sure. <laughs> oh, hi. I said, oh, hi. <laughs> I lit up all the pretty things. I feel like this is what I was supposed to do. Oh no. I picked up one too many. Sounds like a typical Wednesday evening, possible collapse of all suitless. Yeah, I, I think I, I may have... Uh, I think I may have done this wrong? Or maybe I did it right? I don't... It seems happy that I did all this. Everything turned blue. Do I... Oh, do I need to carry this upstairs? Because there are stairs here. I don't know if I'm doing this right or not. <laughs> I'm so confused right now.
and it keeps making noises and I don't know if those are are good noises or bad noises or Oh, okay, that made the button go back. So We'll leave it on the button. The face has not opened. Okay. It's nighttime, didn't it say needed the sun? Yeah, and I don't know if... But I don't know if I have this thing set right or if it's wrong or... it It's very, very vague. Uh, usually you can kind of suss out what it wants. But this one, I mean, I just started flipping handles. And it, I think I got it lined up right. Um, but I don't know. And these symbols down here will light up when the sun hits them. But I have to wait, you know, until it's daylight again. And it's going to be a while, so... I do not know. <laughs> yeah, it keeps making that noise. I don't know my fruits. <laughs> uh, let's see. And I don't know where I'm supposed to stand. Do I... Do I wait down here by the face? Or sh am I supposed to be upstairs pressing something? Or it is really, really vague how this is supposed to work. Okay, it's getting light out. Uh, we shall see. We shall see. The stars have gone away. The moon is setting. Now, I believe the first thing that will light up... Yeah, hurry up, sun! Uh, I believe the first thing that will light up will be the sun. That marker uh, directly above my head. I believe it will start glowing gold. Once the sun actually hits the... I don't even know what you would call this device. Um... It's not a sundial. Um, and I don't think it has anything to do with... I don't know. I'm not sure. It reminds me of the... Uh, I have an antique top that sits in my office here. Um, and it has the concentric rings like this, and if you get the middle of it spinning really hard when you try to turn it, it's virtually impossible to turn it in your hand. Um, okay, the sun's here. The sun is hitting the building. Uh, it is somehow getting darker inside. Okay, sun is hitting the machine. Okay, 
I see the machine's shadows are passing over the building. She makes all kinds of noise when that opens up. Um, that is actually a door. There's something hidden behind that door. Uh, when, when that opens, it makes... Ah, quest updated. An eye to the sky. Complete the puzzle. We did it. That's open. Oh, cool. Whoa. Okay, so trial and error works on that, just an FYI. Look how pretty this is. Okay, so I'm guessing that planet that's lit up in there, is that us? There's a big pyramid. There's a chest down there. In front of me, some kind of projection appears, as if by magic, and in it, sorry, and in its floating geometry, I see the lights that blaze in the night sky. I see where we came from. As I focus on each element of this complex visualization, I realize that there is something being imparted to me, that I am reading and understanding things. Knowledge comes in new, yet feels innate, as though I am being reminded rather than taught. I decide to put my focus toward the sun the small planet nearest the sun, the second planet, an unknown geometry, the glittering ring, the ringed planet, the twinned planet. I think I'm done here. I really hope it lets me pick all of these. But if I were to answer, if it's only going to let me pick one, the one I would pick would be the one that's glowing, the, the, ring, the ringed planet. Carib and his wings. When I pictured it, the ringed planet is populated entirely by beetles, living in a decidedly advanced society. It would be the perfect place for Saima, I think, but I don't love the thought of it myself. It looks larger than, in, than the other planets. That would be a lot of beetles. Time to move on. I decide to put my focus toward. All right, we'll just start from, we'll start from the top and work our way down. No, we'll start our t from the bottom, work our way up. The twin planets. The twin fish, coral and cobalt. There seem to be small moons caught in their currents. The way they move is mesmeric and it's hard to look away. It is said that these two are the most mischievous of the gods, and I recall the legends of them disguising themselves as children to lure kind nomads into the undercurrent of the dunes. Among the Abexi, these stories of the twins are perfect for scaring the too bold and too young out of venturing too far from home. It's a wonder we ever get on with our gliding. Part of me wishes I had not recalled those fishes, and it'll be a challenge not to look askance at the next errant child I meet. I decide to put my focus toward uh, the ringed planet we already looked at, the glittering ring. Aelion, the, a glittering ring of golden dust, 
Every little fleck looks as though it's floating on a breeze, gently through the sky. Are these what make up the stars? The unknown geometry. I look upon a shape that I struggle to describe. It is pure and strange geometry, so bizarre and yet so orderly that it cannot be organic. I know immediately that this is Maw. This is the impossible thing that birthed the whale. That's the mothership. The Maw. I know from stories, from history, and from the knowledge that seeps into my brain that this was made by living things, sentient ones with plans and intentions. But even though I know it, I cannot fathom it. Its scale is incomprehensible. The magnitude of it is such that, even in replica, I cannot look at it for long. Something in me loathes it. I don't know why. The second planet. The second planet is Midden, our sandy little home of an unremarkable rock, made warm and vibrant by the power and energy of the perceptual. Sorry, the perpetual. <laughs> perceptual. And then I learned how to read. Looking at it in this way, I see another side of the perpetual and cannot help but notice that we look ensnared and imprisoned by it, held in its grasp. A cold wind passes, but warms as I remind myself, no, we are not being possessed, we are being protected. I offer myself that comfort. The small planet nearest the sun. Emmis and her two moons flit about the sun like moths dancing over flame. The goat-headed god, patron of the Abexi. Her wisdom and resolve made for some of my very favorite stories growing up. She always seemed more accessible than the other gods. My teachers would say that Emmas is the one we look to when Rohana is too preoccupied for us. I pictured her on her cliff above the ewer, ever patient, ever open. They also said that through certain masks, one could see her shadow on the sun. I can see clearly that the large glowing orb in the center is our sun, and so blindingly bright that I cannot look directly into it without feeling its heat radiate within my skull. Around it, celestial bodies move in a rhythmic dance. Quest updated, an eye to the sky. the same statue that was outside. The machinist's trousers. It's an interesting thing to have all the way inside here. Okay.
Okay, so the last step is heading back to Kalan at the camp. Um, I really thought we were going to find the answer to the ancient race in here. I really did. <laughs> I was mistaken. Um, okay, uh, how do we get back out of here? Uh, where was the entrance? I believe it was at ground level. Is it down one more? No, because I had two jumps to get down to the ground floor. Um, was it here? Maybe it was here. I'm trying to remember. No. There, there it is. It's like, where in the world's the door? More pretty music. Is there anything up there? No. My antennas aren't shaking, so I'm going to take that as a sign that we've found everything here. Just making sure. Passed my bike up. There we go. Let's swing around. Um, there is Marrowbone Station. For some reason, the music at this station is rather loud, so I may have to turn the music back down again.
Kalan says hello. Have you taken a reading yet, Glider? Yes, I opened the door. And you saw what's inside, yes? There was a model. Yes, yes, oh, that is so what I had hoped you'd say. What a solve. Well done, Glider. You must be tremendously proud of yourself, using that little gliding mind of yours. I skirt past little to ask if what I saw helps them. Immensely, more than you know, for reasons I... Well, suffice it to say it helps me, with a few calculations and considerations of my own. But why are you asking about me? Did you learn anything? I pondered the perpetual. I was a little frightened by the maw. I pictured all the beetles on car carib. Uh, what is the most important out of these? Let's say, yeah, we did. We pondered the perpetual. I tell them I found myself perplexed by the perpetual and considering its relationship to us. Fascinating. I can tell Kalan has long moved on. I'm not sure why they asked me anything, really, but I'm glad to see them producing my prize. Here's your badge. Wear it with pride at your sparkling little brain, and perhaps you'll I'll see you in a machinist's mask someday soon. I say goodbye to Kalan. Quest completed, an eye to the sky. Okay, so for as much as I enjoy the bikes and whatnot, what I have gathered from every single machinist I've talked to is they are very full of themselves. And I don't think Sable fits in with them. I just, I just don't get that impression. I don't think she fits in with the machinists. So, heartbreak in the city, the ancient race, and the gliding are left. The gliding is the absolute last thing we'll do. So, an ancient race or heartbreak in the city. We've already asked around a Kriya and we can't seem to get this to complete. So that one I'm kind of stuck on. And the ancient race. I wonder what the ring-shaped artifact is for. Uh, again, it hasn't given us any clues as to where that's supposed to go or what we're supposed to do with it. city just so the music stops. there be another racetrack we're unaware of? There's been one in each section. There was one out there. There's one in the middle. There was one uh, out here. There was one out here. And the one right here. Let's head back to a Kriya. Okay. 
trying to think if there could be another one that we've missed. Uh, yeah, we're going to fast travel. It's just easier. <laughs> it would take forever to crisscross the entire map. All right, we're back in Akria. I don't know who else we could ask here. Just look around and see if anybody's changed, any, any new characters wandering the street. That's the doctor. Those doors are still closed. That is, um, the, um, one of the priests. Uh, let's see, nobody up there. Didn't mean to jump up there. There's never anybody back in here. There's nobody up here. There's nobody in here. Who else are we supposed to talk to? I feel like I'm I, I feel like I'm missing a piece of the puzzle here. Like there's something I'm supposed to do, and I just haven't it hasn't sunk in yet. talk to the kids we already I don't know what we're missing I'm feeling really stuck on this because I don't know how to complete these last two items Maybe we need to go talk to the merchant thing again? Get down off the wall, silly. area. Yes. I have some questions about the power cut. I'd like to buy a merchant's badge. Goodbye. Do I need a merchant's badge? 
Oh, I do. That's the one thing I'm missing. Very well. Alright, I should have enough to buy... Uh, whoops. Nope, back. Anything else? Yes. I have some questions about the power cut. I could ask more questions. Any idea why someone might have taken the core? Where were you when the power went out? Who do you think did it? Okay, I'm done here. I've already asked her all this. I asked her who she thinks did it. It'll be some lowlife from the Sarai. Probably that climber fellow, Gary. They say he's, you know, one to speak to when the job needs doing. Though he's not exactly what I'd call discreet. Fellow like that, he won't be the brains behind it. But if I were a scummy little nobody, he's the person I'd hire to get the work done. I'm told you can find him under the bridge outside of the town gate. I could ask more questions. Yeah, I've already asked her all these. I guess it seems fitting that the way you get a merchant's badge is to just buy it. <laughs> Let's see, we'll run this way. Was that person there before? Green Finn. Imagine what could have happened if the power had stayed off much longer. I think I would have had to have leave town. Oh yeah, we talked to him outside previously. I I don't know. I don't feel like I have enough information to point the finger at somebody. And I think automatically assuming that Gary did it just because you know, he's outside and has a lot of, you know, potential to be the bad guy. I don't think that necessarily makes him the bad guy. Just because somebody has potential doesn't make them... Gary grunts hello. I ask Gary who he thinks di did it. He stares at me for a few seconds and I mistake it for consideration. Before I realize, he's looking at me like I'm stupid. I don't name names, and even if I did, beats me who did this. But more power to him, I say. So, are we going to just point the fiend? I, I feel like the game is going to make us pick Gary, even though I don't think Gary's the one who did it. So, let's go talk to the cops. Uh, we're going to point the finger at Gary. Even though he's not the mastermind behind it. Sandeep says hello. What can I do for you, Sable? 
review suspects. Who do you want to discuss? It was a group. You think it could have been a group effort? What's the motive? Uh, I'm not sure. Who do you want to discuss? Gary. Let's go through the case against Gary. What's his motive? Someone paid him to do it. He has a bad reputation in Akria. People say he'd do anything for money. This is a good lead. How did he do it? He stole the key from Hamza's workshop. Ah, uh, yeah, the workshop was broken into the other day. But... Alright, let's try this again. His motive, someone paid him. How did he do it? He climbed. It's possible. I'm surprised he managed it with the slippery metal surfaces of the atomic heart. <sighs> okay, so it can't be him. Hamza? His motive... I don't think he hates atomic money, does he? Okay, so maybe Hamza... He owed money. He was in debt to the merchants. They send people to ransack his workshop to frighten him into paying up. How did he do it? He understands machines? No. Was it Iria? She does hate the Sarai. Okay, so what if Iria... Okay, so no matter what path I take with any of these characters... He doesn't seem convinced about any of these. So he owed money... He had the code and the card. Yeah, he doesn't... Mm. I... I don't... I don't know. I'm missing something. So everything for Gary is a dead end.
So we just make an accusation. I explain how Gary might have stolen the core, climbing through the glass smashed window in the Atomic Heart. No surprise, those Sarai leech the goodwill of the townsfolk constantly. They resent the comfort and luxuries we have in the Kriya. This is the tip of the iceberg, I'm sure. The sooner we can find a way to rid the town of the scum, the better. It's about time that Lowlife got what was coming to him. I'll enjoy taking him to the jail outside of town. After that, the witnesses can educate his fate. They won't be favorable to a Sarai, that's for sure. I feel like I may have unleashed some underlying tension. I can only hope it's something I... It's not something I come to regret. Thank you for your help. One last thing for your troubles. He gave me a guard badge. Take care, Sable. Quest completed. Heartbreak in the city. So... So it doesn't give me a definitive or whether or not... Okay, so the merchant's mask and the guard's mask. Um, let's fast travel to Burnt Oak. <clears throat> I, I don't like that they're... I'm guessing that no matter who I pointed the finger at, they were just going to say, okay, we're going to book them. Because that, that's the feeling. I, I, I feel like there wasn't a wrong answer. But I'm... I'm not sure how I feel about how he was talking about Gary. The atmosphere in the tent is intense and uncomfortable. I show my guard badges to the mask caster. Quest completed. The guard's mask.
Quest completed. The Merchant's Mask. Alright, let's take a look at our new masks. Uh, so let's see, this is the Whale Mask, the Cartographer's Mask, the Child's Mask, Chum Mask, Climbing Mask, which looks like a lizard, kind of a cross between a lizard and a chicken, uh, the Machinist Mask, the Entertainer's Mask, which looks like a puppet on your head, <laughs> kind of scary, uh, the Guard's Mask, that's pretty cool. Uh, the Hercules Beetle Mask. The Abexi Mask. The Merchant's Mask. The Sandworm Mask. The Scrapper Mask. And the Shade of Acrea Mask. Okay, we only have five new eggs. We've completed 34 of the 36 quests. I wonder what the ring-shaped artifact is for. Okay, so there's two things we can try. Um, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Select this. Does it tell us where to go? No, it puts no markers on the map. It does not, in fact, show us where to go. Or what we're supposed to do. So I was thinking... I mean, let's, let's do this. We're going to zoom in a little bit here. And we're going to kind of move around and see if there's anything that looks like we might have missed. So I'm trying to think, that's the well, so the, it, I noticed it doesn't, oh, that does mark the towers. So that was the race tower there. And then out here, the race tower was like, like here, I think. Here. Yeah, that's the tower there. So the towers don't look necessarily any different. There's there's nothing that makes them stand out necessarily. Thank you. 
I don't know, I feel stumped on this one. And there was a track in the middle, right? Yeah, it was here. Yeah. We found the track out here. We just looked at the track there. We just looked at the track there. And on the map, there are uh, this area. That's one area, two, three, four, five, six. We found six keys and we've been to six areas. And we haven't seen anything that that looked like we could put those keys in it. <sighs> I'm feeling stumped enough that I may actually look this one up. Um... Because it's not giving us any any more it's not giving us any more information. So we're either we're either missing something or or the answer's in here. Because there wasn't a tower in here. Oh, but... Hold on a second. Is it possible to get up on top of this thing? I just realized there's this whole stretch here. Is it possible to get up on top of there? Not only get up on top of there, but get up on top of there with our glider. Like maybe here. Wait, what is this? What is that? Uh, let's go find out. Took me a second to get my bearings, okay. spent much time back in the original 
in the original region. of a hit. Definitely don't make it easy to get up there if there is a way to get up there. So let's go see. We should be pointing right at it. Let's go see what this is first. straight for it. Okay, this looks lower over here. Yeah, by quite a bit. Oh, what's over here? it leans out it won't let us get up there okay what's down here oh sneaky sneak on the inside would you look at that it's a hollowed out rock So far, so good. Anything else over here? Huh. Great view. Of 
Where am I looking? Is that split rock? Is that a Korea over there? No, I'm looking due south. <laughs> That's not a Korea. Um, oh, hello. Do 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 do. Hello. Okay. Got that. Okay, well, this is fascinating. A tower inside a rock. Here's another one. There's another one over there. That one made a different noise than the other ones did. Wonder why. Yeah, those made different noises than the other ones did. My antenna are still wiggling, so that means there's still more. Okay, so the... The way to get up here... Will be to grab onto this... Climb until I can get it over the lip and then jump back to the tower. So, like so. There's the one we saw from outside. All right, we get our stamina back up all the way. There we go. Hello, little buddy. That was the noise we usually get. Oof, super windy. Alright, which tower is that? I don't know which tower that is. Let's see if... If Burnt Oak is to our left, and the uh, cartographer is slightly to our left... Oh, okay, that's the, I think that is the first track we found. Okay. So. Um, there is a chest inside this tower. All right, nothing up here. Sandy die. Okay. A 
It is very creaky. Maybe there's something there? I don't know. I, I feel like I'm grasping at straws at this point. We're, we're missing something. And I don't know what, and the game's not telling me what it is. So I guess we'll we'll shoot for that. Um and so to get there we need to go the exact opposite direction we're facing. We need to go that way. said I wanted to go here so I need to turn a little more this direction yes uh, Mike where are you I hear you there you are Yeah, like we need to skirt around this formation. Exactly the right direction. appears to be the way to get there. Uh, 
Okay, so all of a sudden, all these little anomalies I'm seeing in the... on the map are actually these under underground... not underground, but inside rock places. Yeah. We've gone past this like 50 times. Never noticed this. That is a machinist booth. Where's the machinist? Where's anybody for that matter? Mysterious shrine. Okay. Those look like the rings for the bikes. That is absolutely what those look like. So there's a, there's an egg around us somewhere nearby here. Not under there. Not under there. of that. Not on top of that, but my antenna is flipping faster, so I'm closer to it. Big tower. Alright, what's on this side? Nothing. Okay. Uh, somebody's in here. That's not Elizabeth, is it? Every time I meet another machinist, my mind wanders back to Sizzo. I wonder if she's hearing of my travels through whatever network connects the guild. I wonder if she's proud. I think of her now as I greet this stranger. Machinist Fur. Oh, I love meeting gliders. Come here, come here. What's your name? I approach and tell her I'm Sable. Sable sounds a lot like table. You get that a lot? Uh, this is the first time. Oh, I don't. Or, oh, constantly. This is the first time. No one else has called her table yet. I tell her this is the first time. Really? First thing I thought of. First thing. Anyhow, my name's Fur. Sounds like fear, right? Oh, fear. Sorry. Uh, sounds like deer. Sounds like sheer. Sounds like peer. Sounds like deer, too. She looks thoughtful. I mean, I guess. Anyway, I didn't call you over to talk rhymes. I called you over to show you something you're going to love. I'm pretty deep into historical stuff. 
ruins, old timey ships, the old books, all the old monumentalist leftovers, you know? I nod. Well, recently I've deciphered a few mon monumentalist texts, which point to some sort of synergistic structures positioned all across the world in all different deserts. What do you mean synergistic? I mean that the test suggests that they're responsive, more than simply statues or slabs of rock or whatever their form. The text suggests that they record data or somehow interact with people. But I think it's something else, something way more fun. I asks what sh I asks. <laughs> I ask what she thinks they are. I think they're a game. See, we have this thing, everybody does, where we look to the past and we assume that they were all work and no play. Because we, because all we see, all that persists, is their labor. Ships and logs and tools and things. But fun. Fun's ephemeral. Jokes disappear. Doodles get lost while art survives. So we lose it all, and we all go on assuming that they never had any. So if you've got the time and the inclination, Glider, I'd recommend you keep your eyes open for monumentalist architecture that seems suspicious or strange and responsive somehow. I'd say a glider on a bike's the perfect person to test my theory if you're up for it. Uh, I'll do my best. Good, thank you. I'll try to keep deciphering my records. Report back what you find, please. And if you sort out the game, I hope you enjoy it. I tell her I will. Great, thanks, table. Oh. And good luck. Just called me table. Okay, these have... Uh, I can interact with one, two, three, four. This, this, this is where the keys go. This temple... This is where the keys go. The Hikaric keys. Um... Okay, we already went through all of this. Mysterious Shrine. Okay, it didn't give us an extra quest. So, I think this may be... Yep, the ring-shaped artifact I found looks like it would fit in the pedestal. Quest updated, an ancient race. Interesting. That looks like a beetle.
That doesn't look like a beetle. Quest updated, an ancient race. You're a lifesaver, Sable. That's all the inscriptions. The first two suggest they might be instructions? To build something, I think. But the third part seems to be where all the good stuff is. I ask what she means by good stuff. The why and what of it all. Why we're building this and what we're building. I suspect that is a bit of a treasure hunt. And you're meant to make your own prize. In which case, part of the game is solving the third clue. So I think your work is done for now, and mine begins. Give me a few days, Sable. I reckon I can crack this soon. I tell her I'm keen to see what she comes up with. And we say goodbye for now. Quest updated, an ancient race. Okay, my antenna are going wibbly wobbly so I'm guessing that the maybe up on the roof yeah maybe up on the roof And there it is. One thirty two. Okay, so maybe we'll climb this and go to the top. That's a long way up. Uh, let's see, what's the closer... Um, maybe this way.
the way at the top of the biggest one. <laughs> yep, antennas are flickering faster. It's hiding up here. There it is. should give machinist fur a few days to decipher the inscriptions. Okay. Um All right, anything else look odd or out of place? Cuz that seems to be the go-to. for anything out of the ordinary. What is that? Oh, cartographer. I was like, why? Why are there so many blue worms around that? see 
I guess while we're waiting, we could go, um, we could go to Geyser Tower and see if I can get my bike on top of a vent. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, we could fast travel there. Is my bike. Uh, it says it's behind me. on the other side. <laughs> it's weird it's not showing those. It's only showing one of the rings as lit up instead of all of them. steam vent.
worth a shot. Let's try it again, see if we can bank off of that and get up one level higher. Ooh, easy there, bike. Bobby. That's new. see a way to get up there. I think even the lowest one is still pretty high.
darn it. I was hoping it would glitch the other direction. Up, not down. from there yeah I don't know how to I don't know how to pull it off Wouldn't be this hard if it was a if we were able to do it. Um, where else? Where is there a place where we would be able to get our bike high enough to float? steam coming out of the towers is all I could think of that would work.
Yeah, I don't know where we could go to uh, to facilitate this. These are the whales, which leads you to the archer, which leads you on the path to find the archer. I think I saw them when I came through here previously. Yeah, I'm not sure. Alright, I think we're gonna head back to the uh to the hidden temple. I don't know where we could find enough lift. To, um... Yeah, I don't know where we can get enough lift to actually be airborne for five entire seconds. It's just, it, it, as far as, you know, air time is concerned, that isn't just an astronomical amount of air. I mean, even if I were to, like, come off the edge of one of these cliffs, I don't know if I would, I don't think it would take five seconds to get to the ground. I mean, I guess we could try to ramp this. Hmm. 
<laughs> ah, it's a bit rough for ramping. Yeah, that seems pretty intentional. It's intentionally rough, so you can't, you can't skirt the edge and start getting some altitude on the wall just by doing like that, <laughs> like sliding along the edge there. Thank you. 
This says a few days. I wonder how long we actually have to wait for him. <laughs> uh, is it selected? Yeah, it is selected, so it shows this as the location. So is fur over at the machinist shop? <laughs> so do we wait for him to uh to wander back over the sun's up it's been a couple days
Oh no, it says we have to go to him. Accidentally called the bike. Um, while we're waiting for the machinist, what do we think about uh, and what we're gonna be? What you know, our mask. What is our decision? Um, I don't think we're allowed to pick the whale mask, so that's not really a choice. I haven't really felt a connection to the cartographers. I mean, they're, they're nice enough. They, they give us the maps and whatnot, but, um, The, um, the child's mask isn't an option. The chum mask isn't an option. The climbing mask. I haven't really felt a connection to the climbers. The machinists. I was just saying earlier, I don't really feel like the machinist is the way to go. I don't feel like they've treated her very well. Uh, entertainers. Uh, I don't get that vibe from her. The guard's mask, because of um, Elizabeth, I think this one's at the top of the list right now. Uh, the beetle mask. I don't think that was an option. The abexi mask. Um, that I, I'm very partial to the idea of just going back and serving the community and not like not not choosing one of the other paths. Um, does the Abexi tribe need a merchant? Okay, obviously you can't choose that one. A scrapper. Now a scrapper, you uh, you know. A scrapper would be out, you know, parting out the ships the whole time, so.
Oh, come on. And so we wait. Well, there's no timer on this, so I don't know how long it takes him to make this decision. <laughs> This is one of the one of those quests that they expect you to find at the beginning of the game. Not like at the end when you've when you've essentially done everything else. Um So we wait. <laughs> um, Form. Let's see if we can find any more. Let's look around at the map some more. Do like a deep dive on the map here. Okay, so we've got what? One, two, like three squares.
I was gonna try to climb seven sisters. That was something. Yeah, let's uh let's give climbing seven sisters a try. Let's see if we can climb up all of them. If we can, cool. If we can't, we'll go back and see. Oh, is that Elizabeth? It is Guard Elizabeth. Well look who it is. What are the chances? You look well, friend. Friend. I affect a casual air, and she cannot see me grin as I ask how she's found herself here. Well, I plan to go into Hakoa properly, but as much as I have faith in these old bones to hold me, I didn't fancy roaming in the wastes for too long. Shame, though. I was hoping to grab a few glowing mushrooms. If you can get past the sulfurous pools, they make for quite a snack. I tell her I had never known them to be edible. I'd seen some among Driss's supplies once, and he had told me they were poisonous and to never touch them. Oh, they're very much edible. Found that out one very entertaining evening in Akria. Let's just say there's a case to be made that this is my third gliding if I count the night I, <laughs> I had as my second. She laughs at the memories. And I cheekily reevaluate several things about Driss. <laughs> You've done enough for me, of course, but if you do happen upon any of those fungi luminescent little fellows, I'd love a few. They tend to grow in a cave at the sulfur pools far south of here. Uh, yeah, well, we got a bunch of them. Quest started luminescent adolescent. Guess what we got for you? When I return, Elizabeth is sharpening a knife with a carved hilt and humming a tune that seems at once new and familiar. The sound of her voice is calming then, but booms a welcome. She returns, triumphant, I bet. I confirm as much with a handful of mushrooms as she raises them to her face to smell. As she inhales, I look at the worn edges of her mask. The sun-bleached brow, the wear and tear of age, the scuffs befitting a veteran guard. I remember that before all this, she has seen combat, danger, adventure. There is a deep and crooked line across the cheek where she must have put it back together after a break. And I wonder at what or who did the damage. I bet they thought they had won, that she was beaten, until they saw Elizabeth's grin laid bare, bloody and perilous. She tucks the mushrooms away and draws out a third badge. One more token of my friendship, and a little boost too, should you ever decide to become a guard, like me. I think I might like that. Oh, really? Well, well, well. How interesting. You haven't mentioned that all this time. For what it's worth, I think you'd be good at it. You have a keen eye, a helpful demeanor, and enough patience to listen to this old bird squawk away for ages. The rest you can learn. And I'd be happy to teach you. Yeah, she, she seems like the only one who has taken an actual vested interest in, in, in Sable. I thank her and tell her I will think on it. Don't think too hard. I know it feels like whenever your choice is yours forever, but it is one of many choices you're going to make, and not even the biggest. 
this gliding you're on, it's only your first. There's plenty more life to live. I ask where she's headed next. She laughs. Into these mushrooms first. <laughs> and then, who knows, whenever I move to go, but I'm sure I'll see you there. I bow to Elizabeth and say goodbye for now. Quest completed. Luminescent Adolescent. That's the thing where it makes you fall a little bit. Like that. So... Maybe the trick is to climb up the middle one a little bit and then jump at it? Or do we wait till we're really high, comparatively? Land on top, land on top, land. Oh, I did it. Keep going. That's round two. And then there's the third one. Wait, how, why are we so much lower? Oh, there it is down there. I was like, where in the world did the first one go? Excuse me, uh, the but What? I was... I don't even know what just happened there. I literally don't know what just happened there. I was standing on it, and it... I slipped? And it... 
I didn't f I, I didn't land on the top I just kept falling which doesn't make any sense yeah I'm absolutely baffled at what just happened there Didn't mean to call for my bike. I think that's the first one that just rolled by. Uh, do we have to wait to... I should have jumped when I noticed it. Actually, while we're waiting for that to float back around... I am going to quickly look up uh, how many quests there are. Okay, clearly that's not correct. <laughs> because we have like three times that amount. Um, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. This says twenty-nine. We have
35 completed with two more to go. So that's wrong. <laughs> um, okay, this is the, f I think the starter's right here behind the smoke. Yep. Again with the falling. All right, we'll go to the high side. And we'll wait till we are at our highest. And the It really, like that, it almost made me fall again, and all I was doing was getting up over the edge. This game really doesn't want you to climb these. Okay, so the question is... The next highest. Is that one, which is across the way. sinking okay it has that little bit that that outcrop if we can get on there we can land on that rest and then go again I don't know that we're gonna make it start from here. three. This is officially as far as we've gotten. <laughs> no. too high unless there's an outcropping 
way too high unless there's an outcropping. So now what do we do? Cropping on the middle one. There's not on that one. Oh, do we have to jump for that one? Yeah, because we're too high for that one. Or, I'm sorry, too low for that one. Oh, this one also has an outcropping that's coming around. too low. It let me hold on. Oh my gosh, can I make it up back up to the outcrop? I can't believe I made that. Uh, okay. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. to grab uh, we're high enough to grab but are we high enough to get up there I think we have to be higher I think we have to go to that next one and there's the outcropping spinning around towards us That was weird. Hmm. 
My hands are sweaty from doing this. Uh, okay. Um, the next one is turning towards us. The low side. And I think from there, if I can land that, get on top of the secondary one, getting to the main one should be okay from there. Right, we're rising up. We're lowering again. That one's almost even keeled with where we are. And we're lowering again. One more as we go back up here. down. Literally, my hands are all sweaty <laughs> from, from oh, gripping on so tight. I'm freaking out that I'm not gonna, that I'm gonna like slip. an outcrop facing us right now. Dropping down. We also seem to be moving away slightly. Rising. Rising. Now. there. We've almost done it. We did it. <sighs> it's like I forgot to breathe while I was doing that. sure there was going to be an achievement for climbing this. Is there nothing up here? I'm not going to lie, I am stunned that there's no, there, there was no achievement for getting up here, that there's nothing special up here. Yeah, there's nothing up here.
That's so strange. Yeah, I'm feeling kind of let down. All that effort to get up here for an egg. like there's another worm up on top there is as we approach the uh, the campsite at Seven Sisters Station um, I can see another uh, I can see a worm over there or an egg I guess we'll go get that. I really thought there was going to be something special up here. I'm going to wait for it to go back up. It's still sinking. I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna. F I'm, I'm feeling pretty disappointed that there wasn't something on top of there for the immense amount of effort it took to get on top of Seven Sisters. For there to just be like an egg, <laughs> it just, it just. I, I think that easily was one of the hardest climbs I've done in the game. It was just like, yeah, okay, whatever, you made it. Here's an egg. <laughs> um, Alright, so we'll drop back down to camp, we'll grab our bike and we'll head back and maybe, maybe the machinist will be ready to tell us what's going on.
He still hasn't come back over yet, huh? He's still over there at the machine shop. There we go. Upon seeing me, Fur all but leaps with excitement. Sable, I've been waiting for you. <laughs> you have not. <laughs> I decoded the final inscription. We were right. It was a game. A race. And you completed it exactly as intended. Do you know what that means? Uh, I won? I'm really fast. I won. Oh, you definitely won. Or more accurately, Samoon won. It barely registers with me that she uses Samoon, despite never being introduced. And I don't get a chance to bring it up before she's going on. There's a prize, a real one. Once you complete the race, the pillars reveal the text. Translate the text and you get... Bike parts. Incredible ones, older in their design than any I've ever seen, but perfectly elegant. You must try them, Sable. You must. I can fit the parts on your own bike if you'd like to ride it now. Yes, please. Okay, let's take a look. Um, I can't turn my bike. It's facing me. Um, so th there's the whale ship. Bike parts. Which is a very cool looking bike. There's the beetle bike, which is slow and kind of trudgy. Um, the Eries bike, which is um, slower but looks cool. The giraffe bike, which is faster but handles poorly there's my bike which is you know this the, the middle ground here the hikaric ring bike slower but a ton more acceleration and a lot better handling so it goes a little slower but it handles and accelerates better interesting Uh, the shade bike, slightly better on everything. So do we build it? Or I guess what you could do... Technically, you could take the best of each and make your own, like, custom bike. So the whale ship front has the highest speed. The beetle... no. Giraffe? The giraffe middle has the best... Uh, I don't know.
This bike first shakes her head and shrugs, but it's in the nice way. The way you do it is something so grand and so beautifully awe-inspiring that you can't help but feel small and sort of casually useless in its shadow. This bike is wonderful. I tell her I agree, and I thank her for the opportunity to ride in an ancient race. I also explain that in playing their old game, I felt more connected to the past than I did hearing the drier bits of history. That's great. I mean, it's... that's... I don't know if I'm just a romantic or something, but I have always had such a hard time connecting to the past without connecting to the people. Strange for a machinist, isn't it? I think about it. I suppose it is strange for a machinist, somehow, but I find it comforting, too. There really is room for all kinds behind all masks. I want you to keep the bike and bring it into a new era. Let's see how the, old, how the world changed while it was sleeping. Oh, let it see how the world changed while it was sleeping. I don't ride much myself nowadays, so it'll be in good hands with you. And I'll get to be smug around other machinists, which is all the reward I really need. I thank Fur for her skill and generosity, and head off. Quest completed, an ancient race. Okay, that's cool. Ooh. Not kidding about the acceleration. This bike also has zero issue with, like it doesn't bounce at all, it just floats. Yeah, like that. Let's see if we can do this from here. No, not high enough.
was that not high enough? And two, one thousand, three, one thousand. I don't know how to get higher up. If I knew how to get on top of one of these, I might be able to pull it off.
This is the final quest. Do we go back in or do we search more? I'm really torn. I think we've done it. I think, I think we've, I think we've done it. I don't know, this feels weird for some reason. Like, to go back in here. When I talk to him, it's going to be done. That's going to be <laughs> it. Um, As the ibex camp draws closer, the imagined threshold between home and gliding is palpable. It reminds me of coming in from a sandstorm so fierce that the grains have whipped through the air and through your clothes. You peel off the layers of sand-beaten fabric and marvel at the dust on your skin, the bits that manage to get through despite every precaution. And though you feel so grateful to be home, and so comforted by the safety of the indoors, you can't help but smile, nostalgic, as you wash the sand away. What an adventure you've had, and it was only for you.
Am I ready to choose my mask now? There's no going back if I do. So what happens if I don't choose a mask? Do I stay on my gliding if I don't choose a mask? <laughs> but am I really ready? Quest updated, the gliding. Saima, so you came back. Saima crosses her arms, a challenge. I tell Saima I had to come back because when I left, some minuscule little beetle hunting, part stealing menace threw a fit about it and couldn't stop crying because she missed me <laughs> because she missed me so much she nods yes Jotty took it very hard I can't help it I laugh and I think in doing so I let her win I tell her I missed her I missed you too Sable I'm happy you came back though I can practically see the pout beneath her mask I'm impressed at how genuine she's able to sound. Even if you don't end up staying long. Are you 
going to cry if I leave again? I ask Siam if she's going to cry if I leave. I don't think so, for two reasons. She counts them off her fingers. One, because it's already happened once, so now I'm used to it. Two, because soon it's going to be my gliding, which I'm going to stay on forever. So I can just go on my bike and chase you down wherever you go. I tell Sayama she can't stay on the gliding forever, and that she'll have to choose a mask. Then I'll choose the mask of the bounty hunter. I say that isn't a real mask. Yes, it is. I say it's not. She shrugs. Guess you didn't find it. I tell her no, it isn't real. And that if it were real, I would have found it. Don't think so. It's really hard to find. That's part of it. To become a hunter, you have to be a hunter. I ready my next response but choose to hold my tongue, lest I lose what maturity I gained on the gliding. Saima makes a broad gesture that I think is meant to emulate the knocking of an arrow in a bow. Good luck, Sable. Umar, welcome back. I don't remember the last time I heard Umar speak. Maybe to yell a warning, but never to converse. It takes me a moment to think of something to reply. Umar shrugs silently. I think it's all I'm going to get from him on that. Oh, Sable, it's so good to have you home. I thought about you so much, just imagining all the excitement. Every time we passed a cliffside, I thought, I bet Sable's just hovering everywhere. Have you heard of Lahore the Fabulist? I ask Hilal if they've ever heard of Lahore the Fabulist. Oh, of course I have. Not much for travel, you know. But not two years ago, I made a special trip to Korea just to see her. Why? I tell Hillel I met her out in the desert and that we spent a whole evening talking about life and poetry. I add that I think I may have inspired some original work. That's amazing. So you think, sorry, I'm so excited. So you think it's possible that next time I see Lahore, she might actually read a poem that you inspired? I say yes, it's quite possible. Now that is a gliding. Who cares what mask you choose? You got to hover around the world and you inspired Lahore the Fabulist to write a new poem. If I were you, I'd put on my retirement mask because I'd be done. We laugh together. And it feels really, really good. Who else is here? That's, uh... Being back with the Abexi is more comfortable than I expected. I think I thought the gliding would change every part of me, and that I would somehow come home different. Perhaps more mature, more jaded, or at least able to grasp more of Driss's jokes or Halal's poetry. The actual change is more subtle, and that's it somehow. Despite spending so much time discovering the world beyond, I've never felt more like a part of this clan. 
And it isn't about being a Bexy or which mask I ultimately choose. It's simply that I no longer feel so behind everyone or like they know some grown-up secret I yearn to understand. I feel embraced wholly as the person I am. Sable. So now we've heard your stories, or at least the ones you're happy to tell. That means it's nearly time now. Jody's sigh is contented. I suspect that she was more concerned with my experience of the gliding than the grand choice at its end. For that I am grateful. Are you ready to choose? Am I? Maybe I should choose the Abex mask. I tell Jody that after everything, I am thinking about choosing the Ibex mask and staying with the clan. You'd be welcome to stay with us. I know there's a lot of pressure to choose something else, so much that it sometimes feels boring to choose the very mask you started with. But all of us were gliders once, and certainly not all of us were abexi when we started. We are those who walk in the hoofsteps and seek our freedom in the desert. We know movement, the flow of migration, the joy of changing skies and shifting sands. We embrace difference and celebrate connection all at once. I am proud to be a Bexy. And you may be too. I thank Jody for putting it so nicely. She leans in for a whisper. And if you aren't, you can still come visit. I won't tell. I tell Jody I am ready. And she nods. I won't keep you, Sable. If you know what you want, then all I desire is to learn what it is and celebrate it with you. I'm allowed to be excited too, aren't I? She chuckles. Whenever you're ready, proceed to the temple. send someone oh she went to the machinist shop
Would I be happiest staying here with the Abexi? The guard mask gazes out at me, and I remember Elizabeth. Could I be a guard? Elizabeth was dangerous and daring. She never showed me that side of herself, not really, but for all her laughter and brightness, her self-effacing uh, charm. It was obvious that she carried herself with a confidence I can only envy. And I was n and I know it was born of her work. I could easily imagine that Elizabeth had given directions and gentle advice to the weary travelers of Akria. I could see her walking children home, helping them to find their caregivers or friends, or tending to a scraped knee. And I knew just by talking to her that she was well versed in speaking with reason and patience, and helping before she hurts. But I also felt her power, and the things she was willing to do to keep her people safe. To be a guard, a good one, one must not care for violence nor conflict, but one must know that they are at times necessary 
to protect those who need it the most. There must be a fierceness in the work and fierceness in the heart. Could I hold those two in balance half as well as her? And if I can, then is the path I wish to walk? Should I become a guard? on the mask of the guard. It's a shame I won't work with Elizabeth, but I can't wait to see her again. And that's it. We have finished the game. And with that, we are going to call it a stream because uh, once again, we ran way over and uh yeah about five hours worth of stream tonight um so yeah that is our final play on sable uh we have completed the game uh, i would like to thank everybody who has watched either uh folks that stopped by and watched live uh folks who have watched the vod folks that uh have watched this uh <clears throat> once it's uploaded on youtube the folks that have watched it on youtube uh, if you have enjoyed watching this and you want to see more things like it, please don't forget to hit either the follow, uh, the subscribe, uh, or the subscribe and like, depending on which platform you're on. Um, you'll be notified when I either go live or update items, depending on which platform you're on. Um, but yeah, you'll find out more and you can also follow me on any of the uh, socials. 
Um, I am, uh, you can see him down there. Uh, if you're on, if you're watching this on Twitch, you can see it below. Uh, I'm on YouTube, Twitter, uh, Discord. We have a Discord as well. Um, and I do have my Spotify listed. Uh, so if you want to listen to some music, uh, that's available as well. Uh, the best place to find me though is Twitter. That's uh, the easiest way to, um, that's where I usually, uh, announce stuff and, and talk about things that are going on with the stream. So yeah, that is going to do it for the stream. Um, as always, uh, please be well and take care of yourself. Look out for yourself. Look out for the folks around you. And, uh, please do not forget to treat yourself the same way that you would treat a best friend because you deserve nothing less. Uh, I will be back on Friday. And I very well might be jumping into uh, Fortnite now that the update has happened. We're in a new season. Um, and hopefully some of the craziness has died down a little bit <laughs> so that uh, I can actually play and not you know die every five seconds uh, from people being too sweaty. So... So yeah, um, that will be on Friday, uh, but as far as the stream, we are done. So thanks again for watching. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. And uh, we'll talk to you real soon. Take care. <laughs>